with Shauna at Calhoun's in Knoxville, Tennessee, and you're listening to Chasing Ghosts on Scooters and Bars. Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars, the podcast that blends the modern scooter lifestyle with a twist of the paranormal over, always over, a cool cocktail. Wow, thanks, Lizard. That was nice. Well, thank you. This is Bar Reviews, Scooter Talk, Ghost Stories. Couldn't be much simpler than that, but here is a deeper description. An independent podcast that follows a loose group of modern (laughs) and vintage Vespa riders in search of classic pubs, dive bars, and haunted taverns. This isn't smart or safe. <laughs> no, it is but, not. But it's really fun. And as a disclaimer, we never encourage drinking and scooting and keep our intake to one drink per hour. Wow. You know, Dr- writing. And, well, and, writing. And again, why, why do we have to have a disclaimer? Because Our both insurance people, rates are going to go up. Both, yeah, both people <laughs> listening may try to take this on at home. You just never know. So welcome to episode 30. I just went ahead and added them all up, Lonnie. Gets about time he did that. <laughs> no bonus episodes. No, it's finally it. We're at, the, we're at a benchmark, number 30, and uh, pretty excited about that. And this one's a review of our writing season and favorite bars and stories we collected in 2019. And it's called A Look Back Through Broken Glass. And think about that. That's We've done nice. this 30 fucking times. <laughs> All right. Well, today in studio, we have Mark Scout. Hello. Schaubert. Lonnie Lizard. We have a story about that later. All right. Don't we, Lonnie? And uh, we thought there would be a showing by Bobby Chong, but alas, he canceled again. Uh, might make him obby. But I'm here, your paranormal provocateur, ah. Skip, uh, to lead you down the merry path of scooters, ghosts, and bars. You know, I'm thinking Bobby Chong might not be... Um, Related to you, but more related to Ike, because he's a no-show quite a bit. Right. So, in fact, I quit asking him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's generally out of town, and I just don't want to put that stress on yeah. him. You know, when he's in town, he and Dory are tearing it up. <laughs> Golfing. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are things in your worlds, guys? What, what are the highlights? What are the lowlights? Well, I, I actually do have some new news. Go. No, no children, no, no pregnancy, but uh, <laughs> I've been doing cold showers the last couple of weeks. <sighs> My wife's a lot happier, but my health, I think, is better. You're, you're really doing cold showers? Cold showers, yeah. Who, who told you to no do kidding. those? Is that a Swiss thing? Uh, no. No, not yet, anyway. It's is a, it an uh, electricity thing? Are you out? Well, I um, had, had a shower at school, and uh, the boiler was out, or some godforsaken reason. I had to take a cold shower that day. was complaining about it in the office, and the assistant principal, Doug Gonzalez, said, I do cold showers all the time. And he explained how much healthier they are for your blood, immune system, whatever. Sent me a uh, Joe Rogan podcast. I listened to about 20 minutes of that with some nut job he was interviewing. Well, Joe Rogan, you know, he's not as popular as us, but he's pretty big. No, but, <laughs> and so um, I gave it another shot. Now it's a uh, standard issue. Really? Yeah. Can you get into those little those little cracky areas at all? Well, I, I, <laughs> when I get all cold? Well, I, truth be told, I start with a warm shower, a tepid shower. Tepid. Do the washing, yeah. and then uh, then I focus on the uh, the cold, the last portion of it. I'm up to more than a minute. I figure when I'm choking on my ball sack, that's when it's time to get out. <laughs> if you can reach it, I've never been able to. <laughs> he's doing cold showers, and he drinks that green tea shit in the morning. I think he's trying to outlive us. <laughs> yeah, well, he's well, already 10 years ago. I've got some catching up to do to catch you guys. <laughs> wow, and what kind of soap are you using? Liquid. Oh, which is it? With- <laughs> Dish soap. <laughs> Lonnie, are you are you uh, using a warm shower or a cold shower? No, I use a warm shower, but I do play drop the soap sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're good. all right. Let's keep moving through. What's been going on in your world, Lonnie? How's your house uh, remodel coming uh, along? You know what? It's it's slowly coming along. I'm just about ready to get our kitchen cabinets and uh, get her all put back together. Because we are coming over in December. Oh you know? man! <laughs> but um, we're having a. Um, a baby shower for our 
daughter-in-law on December 15th at noon. And so I expect the construction will be done uh, December 15th, about 10 a.m. Yeah, I was going to say 10 or <laughs> yeah. 11. So it's going to go right down to the wire, but, you know, we'll get, we'll get through it, and yeah. uh, it's all good. And your, your little motorcycle's running. Yeah, I got the Royal Enfield back from the shop and uh, took her for a ride the other day, and that's been fun. And oh. uh, I just took another trip to Nashville, too. Uh, Excuse a, me. That's a, a great trip city. To Nashville, and, and uh, I roamed around by myself, but that, that is that's, that's a, a very fun, fun town. Yeah, yeah, that's a fun place. And well, we all need to go back down there soon. And I talked to a bartender who told me about her haunted place. And uh, of course, I didn't get my recorder out. Nor did you grab your phone and do any kind no, of thing. I'm not sure how to do that, but. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you sit here amongst all this tech. Well, this is high tech. Stick to your this guns, is, Lizard. Stick me. to your guns. Yeah, thank you, Scout. So, speaking of Lizard, you know, you know Lizard's favorite story. You know, you don't want right. to call me Lizard. Right. And uh, they, everybody goes, no, why do they call you Lizard? And Lonnie says, well, I think you know. <laughs> but so we're, we're watching the Seahawks game a couple of weeks ago at, uh, at the mill in uh, Edgewood, Milton. I don't know. And sitting at the bar and this woman sitting next to us scoots down, wants to be part of our little two-man group. And uh, her name was Dee, if I remember right. And Lonnie goes, hey, you want to know why they call me the Lizard? And she said, <laughs> Because you have dry skin, <laughs> and Lonnie was speechless. He had I, I no snappy comeback. I guess I'm just getting old because I just kind of took the uh, dry skin. <laughs> Never. Thing he didn't even try to. He didn't even try to fix it. He <laughs> just said, "Yeah, well, do you have some lotion?" Maybe you've been laying on a rock again. <laughs> well, it is winter, and it, it I was, do my best work. In the it summer. was very, very, very funny. <laughs> well, it, what, Skip? What have you been up to? Well, well, first I want to know about your scooter. Is it still at Andiamo? Having Jason? Uh, yeah, Jason still got it. He's yeah. had it for a couple of weeks now. And what are they doing? What are they doing to it? Little of this, little of that. New new pipe. New pipe. New transmission. Brakes. New something gear. Johnson okay, rod. They're or doing <laughs> they're doing a bunch of stuff to it. Well, I was down there uh, the other day and I saw it sitting there and I asked him about. it. Did you it. recognize it? I did. I said hi to it for you. Oh, good. Yeah, it, it looks a little lonely. You know, it's, that building's haunted. There's no Buick dealership. Hmm. Well, it's been a while. I need to get it back so I can take a ride once in a while. I feel yeah. naked. Well, I, I have to loan you old red. I know. When that happens. It's sad. Yeah, there's there's a few things going on in my world. I just had Cooper's 21st birthday run. My my Your youngest, youngest son. son. Yeah. Oh, boy. You must be over 60. Yeah. Oh, and thank you for that. <laughs> So yeah, we. Uh, we Where'd did, you take him? Well, to mostly to all my favorite bars. <laughs> well, think, he's got to start somewhere. He needed to have an education because uh, we, you are a selfish sob. We yes. all know that. No, we had a pretty good event. Um, we started in South Park at Lorena. Was it just the two of you? No, it was. It was his mother and I. You and, separated? N- no, my. <laughs> only in her mind. <laughs> and then. Uh, I, uh, his your brother son. Davis. That's right? your other son. His girlfriend Kara, and then Cooper's girlfriend Sydney. Oh, so there were yeah, six, the whole crew. six of us. Six okay, of we had a penthouse suite at the Camlin. Well, wow. which was kind of nice. It's a, a world mark deal that we we got. Wow. We started. We hit all the bars. We got we got up there to it. Uh, Did you get the kills. Loretta's, Jules Mays, Brass Star, the Mexican ne- Mexcal bar. I, Miss Mezcal. Mezcal. Thank you. Then we went to Capitol Hill, went to several bars, including wow. Linda's, and she owns several haunted bars. Hmm. And then um, downtown to the Farmer's Market and, yes, Kells. All right. And which was his favorite? He, boy, you'd need to ask him. Does he him. remember? Not all of them. Beth had to pull over twice driving him back to college <laughs> so he could puke <laughs> afterwards. So um, I had to look at my debit card oh my. to find out the last few places that we went to. <laughs> That's but a good we trip were, right there. Yeah, we were on foot, <laughs> so just so we're clear. Uh, at the end of the night, so we're staying on the top floor of the Camlin, and there's this private room that used to be the cloud room. It's an old bar, and they just use it. You can have people in there, and our, our keys gave us access to it. And so we're sitting there looking over Seattle, and it's late. I mean, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we get our ovulus out, which is a, a machine that tr- – says words based on the spirit energy or whatever it happens to be. So we're asking questions because oh, the camel is known to be haunted, right? You, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you got something to say? No, I, you said you got your obvious, obvious out. I thought you were ovulating. <laughs> <laughs> In a way. So there it was sitting there, and it said a few random words, this and that. Some kind of made sense, and then finally it just said, Davis. 
and that's Davis's name, wow. obviously, and that's not a normal word that would come out, you think of coming, having your own name come out of an ovulus. So uh, da- Davis- How did he take it? He, he, he was a little bit freaked out. Hmm. Made him a little uncomfortable. It made his eyes go big like saucers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he- um, That's what mine do in the cold shower. He was, he was rattled. <laughs> anyway, pretty excited also about my new gel seat. You what? My new gel seat. I got it from Vespa Portland, the group down there. Are you suffering hemorrhoids? Or? No, no, no. It's Does, just it's wait, really wait, wait. cool. Does Medicare pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, I won't know for several years. The uh, It has a real sh- a back rear slope. Looks like a cafe racer on my super cool bl- mm. black badass Vespa. And uh, so thanks to those guys, they also sent me a, and only one, sorry, Twist and Play Scooter Club sticker. What? Yeah. So it's going to go on my um, on my bike. And they invited us down to the Spring Scoot, which what, is in Portland month? over like a four, it looks like a four-day ride wow. uh, in like April 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Sounds uh, like a good oh, test run. I think we need to do that. A little practice run right I now. marked us down as interested on okay. Facebook, just so you know. Good. As soon okay. as we get you into the social media, Mark, I think... Uh, might be a little while. We might be there before we get me into social media. <laughs> the less you know, the better. Yes. So people do talk about you. My, my life has been pretty well run that way. There you go. I love that, that seat. I, I, here's another thing I did. I, I bought a book on Kindle called, check this out, Chasing Ghosts on a Moped. And I went, what? Did you buy what it because of the, the title? What the fuck is this? <laughs> And I was so excited. I bought it. I was so excited to read it all the way through and maybe interview the, the author and say, wow, you write a Was it a picture and, book? No. Do we owe you some money? No. <laughs> so this is a tough-talking veteran paranormal investigator in England, and he talks about his most dramatic haunts and um, investigations. And, some, and, and I'm not kidding. There's about... I would say nine to 11 different separate okay, how, how many pages is this book? <laughs> it's like 110. I mean, you can read it in a, okay. an hour, hour and a half. But in at least half of them, he goes, so I'm sitting in there and I've got to take a shit. <laughs> and so some of his hauntings come while he runs into the bathroom and all these crazy things happen. I, I don't make me a little uncomfortable. He never, ever brought up a Vespa or, or, or even a scooter or a moped. But the name of his book is Chasing Ghosts on a Moped. He's a really? wannabe. So... His name's Michael we, McGee, and you know we, what? There are some pretty compelling things in the book and pretty good little stories, but it's also colloquial to, to England and on, in the areas that he lives in that some of it's kind of hard to understand the language, but but his reference to his bowel movements all the time. <laughs> I mean, can get home. It's like, really? You're writing a book. Do, you, do we need to talk about that? So in our grand tour to Europe, we'll have to stop and, and catch up with him? Yeah, but I'm still hoping to, to do a little interview. i got to give him some shit about shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, are you following us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook? Uh, just search Scooters, Ghosts, and Bars, and we promise we will pop up, so to speak. We would really appreciate your follow and any reviews or comments. We need them. It helps us climb in the rankings, but really, where could we go? Because uh, we are the number one scooter podcast in the world. Right. That features ghosts and bars. Right. And I bet <laughs> you we could just say features ghosts, and Probably. we still would be it. Or mopeds. <laughs> right, and also what, you. How's our uh, How's your feedback been? Well, pretty good. I'd I'd like to at least welcome some new listeners. From where? From Sweden. Huh, Sweden. No, okay. Jordan, no the Mid East. Jordan. Yeah, the Netherlands and Belgium. Wow. I mean, I, wow. Belgium is a scooter town. That's kind of cool. Well, it's a tiny that's little impressive. country. It is uh, pretty cool. So if you. Any of you in those countries or anybody what? else that's listening, by the way, New Zealand continues to rank as our number two listening group behind the United States. Really? Yeah, so New what? Zealand. New Zealand, take note. We're coming there in the next five years. We, I will go. Yeah, I would love to go down there. Oh, is this another one of those, yeah. we'll buy you a drink if you show up and two people show up? <laughs> <laughs> and I have to call and give them my debit card over the phone. So uh, if you, any of you guys have a, have a ghost or cryptid or UFO or anything paranormal story to share, please just write it down and send it to us at markh at chasingghost.net or record it on your phone's voice recorder and send it through the digital world to our website, chasingghost.net, or social media or any of the numerous ways you can send direct messages. I mean, we are not hard to find. We want to hear from you. 
Yeah, but are they positive response? You don't talk about your responses very so, much. So, Mark, when we, are first you hiding st- something? when we first started out, yeah. if you remember, you, you, wrote, well, I was there. you wrote a review. I did. And then that, from that review. point on, I've never been able to get back to I that did. spot. Good. But we have, we have lots of reviews that are out there, and everyone is, oh, better. So everybody, everyone is better than the one you gave us. So, <laughs> well, honesty is a lost art. <laughs> so everybody can see people's reviews? Yeah, you can read the reviews if you're like going on Apple Podcasts. Oh. The reviews, if you go. Oh, on then the, never mind. It's a good point. Go on our Facebook page or some nice reviews. We, on you there. and I can talk later then on <laughs> what kind of reviews we're getting. So, but you know, right when we first, the first day, you decided it would be funny to yeah, leave a somehow review. Somehow you, well, you gave me directions. You, so here's how you do it. So I, <laughs> I figured it out. And then after that, I've never been able to get back to that spot. Yeah. So thank you so much for bringing us down to a four point nine. Since then, I've been to the right spot. Now it's been uphill ever since. <laughs> That's right. Okay, there it is. This is Dustine at the Spunky Monkey in Auburn, Washington, and you're listening to Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars. Now back to the show. Hey, what time can, is it? Can we have a time uh, check? Yeah, let's have a time check. What time is it? <laughs> time for <laughs> Scooter, Scooter News. News. All right, That's all right. right. So I want to talk about Italjet. Who? Italjet. This is a Airplane? motorcycle company uh, out of uh, Italy, obviously, and uh, they build they built motorcycles and electric bicycles. I hope and, they're not building in Venice. And scooters. Because that's flooded. But right let's now. talk about the new Italjet Dragster. Oh, man. Right? What, what do you have here? Okay, so I, here we go from Scooter Lab UK. I heard it described as the Lamborghini of the scooter, scooter world today by a Dutch scooter distributor. He's not far from wrong either. The more you look at the scooter, the more you realize, from a design point of view, just how far above everything else it stands. This rips up the scooter design rule book and blows the current modern crop of cloned look-alike scooters into the weeds. Okay, what's what's the end game here? What well, are, they, are they trying to be more badass? Or are they trying to so be... think about the difference of how a Ducati looks versus just a regular Honda motorcycle, right? One is this beautiful Italian design with exposed piping and that kind of thing. Don't shit on the Japanese. I'm not. You're already <laughs> skewing your description. <laughs> All I'm saying is that the Italians know how to design shit. Yep, all right, they do. Except the canals in Venice. Here's where you're really going to... They're having a little problem there. <laughs> yes, they are. Here's what you're going to love, being an Aprilia owner. Yep, yep. The engines are Aprilia-derived der- der- four-valve, four-stroke lumps in both 125cc and 200cc variants. Oh, I like my 200. Now, you know who else used them? Scumati, although... Uh, the Italjet uses a liquid-cooled engines as opposed to an air-cooled by them. So there you go. Yeah. Naturally, there will also be an electric version later on. Naturally. Everybody's, hey, going, everybody's going electric. But you know what? I would love to add one of those to our collection. That is so cool. One of these? Yeah, one of these. Yeah, I, I mean, when you look at them and, or you go online and take a look at them, they are fucking beautiful. Yeah. And there'll be no two-stroke option as you would normally expect. So uh, put your oil bottles back in the garage, they say, <laughs> at Scooter Lab. And if 200cc isn't big enough for you, tough luck. Another website called A Ride Apart, very popular, says it looks like a Ducati scooter for the 22nd century. Oh, Pretty cutting cool. edge. Oh. They say the streets of Italy are in for a rude awakening. Unleashed at EICMA, witness the fiendish power of the Italjet dragster. A powerhouse. A powerhouse of a scooter that looks like it can chase down... The latest Kawasaki Ninja H2, eat it for breakfast and spit it out without battling, batting a futuristic <laughs> eyelash. Very, very good sense. Okay. Rather than living in the past like Vespa. Now, I'm more of a retro nostalgia guy, so I'm okay living in the past. A Taljet looks to the future, drawing inspiration from the very best super sport bikes for its own version that is perhaps just a little bit slower. You know what I noticed, though? What? No gel seats. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, who knows? I think you're they still doing be. better than they are. So some, some facts about Italjet. Leopoldo Tar- Tartarini was a pilot who started it and later a race factory racer for Ducati. So he knows what he's doing. They've been making scooters, motorcycles, and now electric bicycles since 1959. 1959? With over 150 designs to their credit. And in 1980, MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, added an Italjet Pac-2 to their permanent collection. Their only motorized two-wheeler, while the Guggenheim included, oh, the Guggenheim. included a Formula 50 LC in the Art of Motorcycle exhibiting, Exhibit. 
The Formula 50 LC has won Scooter of the Year Award four times in three different countries. Wow. So why is there no Italjet dealer in the United States? Somebody has got an opportunity. Italjet? It's mhelgen at msn.com. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it is mhelgen at msn.com. <laughs> That's my other one. Forget that. It's Mark H at ChasingGhost.net. 253-753. We can only hope that this smart little rocket will be available here in the U.S. at some point, but if you want to take a look, you should check it out at italjet.com, and it also shows a pre-order option, so you can pre-order this new dragster that's coming out. And we're looking at the pictures here. I don't know. Just give me two or three thoughts about what you think it looks like or how it looks. How do I sign up? I would love to have one. It looks yeah. muscly. It's it, a muscly scooter. Yeah. Um, the, the original Dragster has been around for like 20 years, so this is a complete redesign. And like I said, uh, if you think of a Honda Ruckus with the exposed tubing, only done so well and looks so strong, uh, it's pretty – Pretty impressive. But why not in the U.S. or just not yet? I'm, I, I'm not sure and because I, I really st- started pulling this up and reading about most of it today. I mean, I've known about the, dra- uh, the dragster, but uh, I'm not sure why there's no dealer. I did find there's a dealer for their electric bicycles. I would have to imagine their, somebody in America would buy it. It has that. something probably to do with emissions and everything else. Yeah, trying to get probably. It in. And, you know, Americans are... With no oil, how can there be emissions? Only on the e-bike, but the, the gas, the you four-stroke said, put gas your oil, oil cans away. Your two-stroke oil. Yeah. But I, have oil. I got to think that most Americans are, in the, uh, in, the, in the words of Mean Gene, fucking pussies, and they just haven't adapted to the really cool shit yet. We're just trying to keep an eye on our carbon footprint. That's right. And, and I'm sorry for not listening when you were <laughs> reading about the Ducati. So there you go. That's this week's <laughs> Scooter News. So what happens right after Scooter News? Well, typically... It's... Spooky News! news. There we go. (laughs) This one's for you, Mark. What do you got? You're a basketball coach. Yeah. You have been for 20 years. Or 26, yes. Well, 20 at 5 as the varsity coach, the longest running varsity coach Anyway, back to the the Spooky News. (laughs) How are your kids this year? Nice boys. Nice boys. (laughs) Are we we teaching them all about character building and all that kind of thing, as well as basketball? We're going to start with dribbling. Okay, then then we're going to go to character building. (laughs) So here's one. NBA star Meta World Peace claims ghosts touched him inappropriately. What? This is from the Huffington Post, but reported at several different news sites. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers star. Okay, Meta- how, how familiar are you with world, Meta World Peace? So he used to have a different name, I think. He had his real name, yeah. And I don't know what it is, though. The lizard had it. What yeah. was it? Ron Artest. Wow, so Ron had a little. Well, Ron's out there, yeah. Ron, just so you know. So Ron Gabriel. Yeah, no, <laughs> Ron, Ron, Ron has a violent streak in him, big time. Well, that doesn't mean that he didn't get haunted. I know, but. Let's just go to Dateline here. All right, sorry. So uh, he may have had good reason to feel spooked over the weekend. He claims ghosts okay, touched stop. him this, inappropriately. This is a while, he hasn't played for the Lakers in about six years. That's not true. This is a, a new deal. He, just because came you out. saw it doesn't mean it yeah, happened. No, he's got to be forty by now. <laughs> well, f- so anyway. listeners, <laughs> so please the, forgive Skip. He uh, <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. From the archives. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's still NBA spooky star, news. Meta World. No, it's it was a bright on on a new website. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe he's not playing he, anymore, but he still got haunted. He played for the Lakers about six okay. years ago. Yeah. I, okay, I didn't think he was still. He's still playing. trying to stay relevant. This just you happened. said this weekend. <laughs> this just happened. <laughs> okay. Even though he's not playing. Fuck you. He's still. An you NBA don't star. know your news. <laughs> Anyway. Now I'm starting to doubt everything you're talking about. Well, it says the Lakers were in Oklahoma City to play the Thunder on Saturday. They don't even play there anymore. Okay. They left that city. This is still a good story. Let's go. See what I mean? He doesn't even know. And they stayed at the Skirvin Hilton. The hotel is said to be haunted, especially on the 10th floor where visiting NBA teams usually stay, according to NewsOK.com. The supernatural speculation is so strong that Lakers players Lou Williams and Larry Nance, are they still playing? Uh, well, no. Oh, well, shit. Yes, they are. But Larry Nance Sr. was a hell of a ball player for the Cleveland Cavs. Well, that's good. With Brad Doherty. But and they booked rooms at Mark another Price. hotel than rather deal with the possible sightings there at the uh, Skirvin. Pussies. World Peace, 
or WP, as right. we like to say, who stayed at the Skirvin told the Orange County Register he had an encounter that might be described as an astral assault. Okay, now we got to hear. What, what, what's he talking Here's about? Here's what he said. Did he say an Here, astral assault? <laughs> the, he said, the ghosts were all over me. I just accepted it. They touched me all over the place. I'm not, I, he goes, I'm taking one of the ghosts to court for touching me in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the cheeky quote, World Peace insisted he was serious, and then he explained why he didn't run away. I was watching a good movie, and I was tired. I didn't want to move. He said, naming it was a George Clooney flick, Money Monster. Oh, I can that understand. Just, yeah. Yeah. just as scary as the ghostly groping, two NBA, <laughs> two NBA That's players. That's a whole different podcast. Laker Nick Young and Cleveland Cavaliers star Kyle Irving both reported. Kyrie. It's Kyrie. Kyrie, Irving. thank you. <laughs> Who's Kelly now Kelly. in New Jersey <laughs> or Brooklyn? Both reported bed bugs from stays at the Skirvin, according to the NBA. So maybe World Peace had some bed bugs, thinking they were ghosts. Maybe he had crabs. The ho- hotel the didn't before. seem too scared about World Peace's story when local station KOCO TV asked for a comment. They released this statement at the Skirvin. The only confirmed spirit we have here at the Skirvin is positive spirit of hospitality. Ah. In fact, we just <laughs> celebrated our 105th anniversary. Maybe now it's 110. Yeah. PR 101. Yeah, nice, nice spin from the Skirvin marketing <laughs> department. <laughs> and completed a $4.3 million cleaning and renovation. <laughs> well, so long for the bed bugs. Then. Happy Halloween, <laughs> they say. So there you go. There it is. That okay, is well, a little bit of spooky yeah. news that has to do with basketball. I just thought I'd pull one, pull one out from the We should the check the court records to see if they made it to court. <laughs> this is Josie at the Brick House in Port Orchard, Washington, and you're listening to Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars. Wow. So before we get started with our favorite stories and bars from the 2019 writing season, I want to share a story. Oh, now we're going to actually get to the review. Yeah. No, we're not going to do a review yet. I want God to share damn, a story. How long from, is this well, podcast? it's a long one. I want to share a story from Allie, who's been haunted now, ongoing for several years, including her and my place of work. So I work with Allison, and she's been haunted even at our work. Oh, and he, this is what inspired the title. A little bit of broken glass. Yeah. 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 So this is a story of not where is haunted, not a place that's haunted, but who is haunted. As you can Ooh. have both, right? Right. So I'm a, sometimes they just follow, right? I, we talked about, uh, what was the kid that used to follow me around for a while? Jimmy Chip. Danny. Danny. Danny yeah. followed me. But this has been going on with her for like 17 years. So here's Allison's story. You know that, what? I think instead of calling this broken glass, I think it should have been, I shattered myself. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, here's Listen, a, you should have gotten here sooner. How's your drink? Here's Allison's story of um, broken glass. It's going to turn into I got shattered. So uh, I'm sitting with Allison Helfen. You have the same last name of me, only there's an F instead of a G. Correct. And we, we work together. And you've been here now a little over a year. Yep. And you have told me a story this off and on this entire time that you've been here. And it has to do with broken glass and the paranormal. Yep. So so why don't you start at the beginning and kind of give us some history? So it began the two days before um, I got married. And it was my husband-to-be and my mom and I sitting around the dinner table when uh, glass flung off of a rack and went about five feet and shattered. And my mom said, he's here. (laughs) And who's he? He would be my dad who had passed away. And when he passed away about a year before, he went out of his way to really haunt me two days after he died. He did a whole bunch of tricks. My dad was a jokester. So he flung stuff into the tub, he including the Kleenex box. He turned the TV on and off. He left it on the fishing channel for me. Did he watch the fishing Mm -hmm. channel? He watched it every day. So tell me about how this has continued since he's passed away. How long has it been? He died in 02, so 17 years. And so right after that, um, when I opened the wine shop in 2005, I would randomly find, for no reason, a little pile of glass 
on the counter or I might find a big chunk in the middle of the walkway or I might find it on my desk and they were always certain days that I was either having troubles or struggles with something and the year that my a year after my mom died uh, it was the anniversary of her death and we were really close and I said I don't know how I'm going to handle her death and I was dreading going to work and I thought I don't, I don't know how to get through the day that morning at three in the morning all the windows were broken at the wine store so we were closed that day and there was glass everywhere and so from then he will continue to leave me these little bits of glass. Well, when I came to work here, actually be a year before that even, uh, my family has a place on Camino Island and I got out of the shower of this one bathroom and there was just randomly a pile of glass on the floor. Cleaned it all up, didn't know where it came from. Then I came to work here, and after a few months, there was a little piece of glass on my desk. And in my two new apartments, and, the, and there's nothing on the counter but a little piece of glass. But, but I mean little, it's at least two inches sitting smack in the middle of the counter for no reason. Two inches is little. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's a little. <laughs> uh, but not have broken anything. Right. And then, so there's no place where this glass could have come from. It's Nowhere. not like there's a broken vase nope. or, or a mirror or anything like that. It just appears. It just appears. Including here. I had one here. And so then uh, mm -hmm. about a year ago, back to the Camino house. Actually, no, I'm sorry. A few months ago, there was a huge pile of probably 10 pieces. And we scooped them all up. We vacuumed the whole bathroom because we didn't know where it came from. And this last weekend, there was another pile in that same bathroom. Wow. And it's while you're there. It's while I'm there. It's never It doesn't appears. happen when you're not no. there. No. So what is the significance of the glass to your dad? Do you know? I don't know. The only thing I think of is he was a jokester. And he would probably think it'd be funny if I stepped on it and cut myself. But I don't think that's very funny. You know? Yeah. But he's kind of funny that way. So he had a little, little bit of a mean streak? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> joke, he... He's, joking mean streak? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, one year for April Fool's, he told me, this is before we had cell phones, told me that my mom was in a car accident in Everett, and I drove all the way there, couldn't find her, and came home, and he said April Fool's. Okay. So he I, was I, a jokester. I kind of get that, yeah. So, but you also, uh, as a sideline, have a, a blog. I do have a blog. What's that called? It's called Boating Journey. Really? And I hear it's one of the top blogs for boating that's it, out there. It was in the top 20 for last year. Oh, yep. that's great. How yeah. do you find it? Boatingjourney.com. And you're Allison. I am. So go to Boating Journey and read all about her adventures on her beautiful Bayliner yacht. Yeah. Wow. What did you uh, think, of, think of her story? I loved the <laughs> fake death or mom's in an accident. Oh, the the, the April Fool's. April Fool's. Yeah, April Fool's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That brought me much no doubt. Either. Her dad had had it going on. He had a little uh, edge to yeah. edge to him. Yeah. yeah, that's like I drive all the way to Linwood from. They lived in Spokane, <laughs> so she drove all the way. No, I don't know, I don't know where they live, but uh, pretty amazing, pretty good story. And and let me tell you what happened right after we recorded that. We recorded it at the end of work, so it was like a five o'clock or five fifteen or something like that. It took just five minutes to record it. She had to go, and uh, she locks up her office, and we lock our offices, and she heads downstairs to our concierge, which is down on the showroom where all the boats are, and she's talking to her down there, and the concierge said, why are you down here? You just called me on my phone from your extension, and there was heavy breathing. That's it. So really? her extension ringed, wow. rang. After she left her office and walked downstairs, and now she's down there, she's hanging up looking at her going, someone's in your office, because I just got a call. What was dad's name? Breathing. I don't know. I don't know her dad's name. I could have a drink with him. Not only that, then there was another phone call that came from her extension after that. She went back upstairs to check to make sure there wasn't somebody using her, her stuff, right? And it was still locked up and, and dark. So wow. that happened right after we recorded that story. So pretty cool. Hmm. Pretty, pretty exciting. I don't know if we ever, we even got the 
telephone company or voice over internet, you know, VOI, whatever that is, protocol. And they checked all our systems and said everything's working normally. But it, so a little of bit of all a our out. stories we've had over the years, this is one of the more compelling ones then. Well, I mean, it, it isn't necessarily a scooter or bar or, or bar it's story, but it is a ghost story. It's a great yeah. ghost story, yeah. That's in your title. So, so anyway, there you go. Uh, and I thank, like it. That thanks, was a good one. Thanks, Allison, for sharing that. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a ride down memory lane. From Finally, the- we get to the review. I've been waiting for this one. Uh, we're going to take a, <laughs> a ride down memory lane from this spring, summer, and fall. In fact, Scout, uh, you and I and Chong uh, took a recent ride just a we week did. or two Couple or three week- ago, right? Three weeks ago, yeah. And it started at the at the uh, lodge, the Milton Lodge That's down, where down the hill there. Yep. And make and a couple stops. So after we had a quick drink, you ran into Heather, and yeah. uh, who, who you knew from coaching, and she invited us to meet her, go to their table, meet her her husband, Brandon, but, I think. And, right, but I and said her no, Sarah, Sarah, and I said no. We gotta, we're heading out to the next place because we we're gonna do a little day. It, it had been a while since we've had a day run, right? The group of us, so. And so anyway, I walked over. Didn't want to be impolite, right? I walked over there and. Uh, Next thing we know, we were all there. And well, first of all, Bobby Chong and I were outside getting our gear on, or having a cigarette. You, <laughs> you came out and go, maybe we're staying <laughs> for a quick one, and, and we didn't we didn't fight it, so then, we we went back in. Yeah, the thing, next thing we knew, there were shots. Well, we had two drinks because remember we had we ordered. We're going to do one and go. You must have been the, there for two hours. The bartender <laughs> came back with three more drinks just because she, she thought, saw hey, us there. Yeah, you're gonna, it's right. near empty. So we had, then we're going to, well, we got to go, we got to go. And then Heather bumped into me. And so all of a sudden we bullshit for a little bit. And then I thought we were out of there. But alas, we were not. We never made it to another bar. No. And we were there for a few hours, was it? Well, we want to say thanks to the three of them for showing us how it's done at the lodge. Yeah. It was and, their anniversary, too. Yeah, that's right. Heather's and uh, her husband. Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> nice guy, though. Brandon or very, Jason. Very, very, very nice, nice guy. guy. Yeah. And uh, thanks to all three of them for, once again, uh, showing us a nice time and, and super nice to meet you. Super so, Sarah. Super nice. Super, super nice. nice to meet you. But let's get to it. Let's, our, let's talk about our favorite things of 2019. Well, I think the wow. it's got to be the, ri- the ride, right? Yeah. yeah, the main ride. The main ride was pretty good, and and in fact, I'll I'll even start it out. Uh, we are one of our very first bars when we arrived in Spokane was the Baby Bar. Uh, instant classic. It, it was a super small, intimate space, ultra dark, even in the late afternoon, and it was like pitch black in there. But you had to walk back to it, didn't you? Right, there's it like was a, a diner or something. Speakeasy uh, concept. Hideaway, yeah. You have to go find it. Find the door, get in there. Seats about maybe twenty people at the most. Yeah, and there's like haunted Victorian dolls and uh, yetis and yeah, uh, they, they, it was pretty eclectically <laughs> put know, together. Aliens, greys that are sitting up sitting there on top of each other. Yeah, got a, Keith gets a beer and he goes to drink it, and there's a Bigfoot on the beer. Right. So a paranormal themed speakeasy, uh, uh, intimate uh, space. I really liked it. I. I uh, could go back any time. Well, we went back later that night. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we, we liked did. It so much. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like one visit to me. <laughs> but uh, that was mine, and and that's why. I mean, I really liked it there. How about you, Lonnie? What what about uh, what was your what would you say was one of your favorites? You know that that ride that we did was a. We didn't hit our, our quota. We Again, only mid, we only did thirty some bars in four days. We fought hard, which, which is a little disappointing, but. Um, my favorite on that trip, for sure, was f- uh, the bar called Frednecks. Oh, and yeah. if you recall, um, that was the owner who l- allowed us to bring our scooters in the back door of the bar and take pictures. But when the bar is called Frednecks, I mean, that's a classic right To there. me, it brings up the idea of gooey ducks. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was just... Yeah, we parked our scooter and said, we got ghost stories, we got There was a farmer's yeah. market going on in the yeah, back. The whole yeah. thing was, it was really cool. It was in a, in a town very, called Rockford. Rockford, that's and right. very but friendly. But was that Rockford, bar- Idaho, bartenders. Washington, or Montana? I think that uh, let, me, let me check my records <laughs> quick. Um, 
That was Washington. Okay. Well, but was right. It really? No, it was Idaho. It Idaho. Was Rock- that was, yeah, it was inside yeah. the border from Montana. Yeah, we I think. we yeah. just left Tico. Tico was our last stop in Washington. So there you go. Thank God. Well, it could have been actually Washington. Now that I think about it, because we were straddling the border. Ah, that was- you've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> How about That's you? a different podcast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's the number three podcast in the world. <laughs> so, Mark, what about you? Well, I'm going to go. More chron- chronological. I well, like, it doesn't have to be from the trip. It could be anytime, anywhere we went well, this summer. I don't know if we've gone anywhere new this summer. Well, we yeah. went to Seattle. Remember our Seattle ride? I always yeah. love Loretta's because that burger, yeah. it's a great yeah. bar. Right. Loretta's. And we did that this summer. Right. Yeah. And and so I, I really like Loretta's. I, I, I will go. But I, I was not going to talk about Loretta's. Right. Because we've, been, we've done a lot of training rides, but we've hit, we've hit a lot of local bars, and it's hard to come up with something. And that, we've talked about yeah, those. Right. Can I just do what I want to do? We talked about these on our last <laughs> podcast, too. So go. But I, I, I like the Spangle. Oh. It was our first bar after, the, uh, after we unloaded everything. And it uh, wasn't quite open yet. I love those when they're not quite open, but they kind of let us in. We um, we ingratiate ourselves with the locals, and all of a sudden, she, he dad calls the daughter and says, "Hey, you need Tina? to get over here." Was that her name, Tina, or something? Sounds like about that. right. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. She 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 was a sparkly, spangly little. Thing. Yeah. I think we I had mean, two drinks there. Dad gave her a call. <laughs> dad gave her a call to her trailer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, she got put her hair up. <laughs> she, she did her say boots she on. Her. Here she was. <laughs> she put her cowboy boots in her. In her jean shorts on, <laughs> and uh, her, uh, she did mention her three screaming children. <laughs> but she you was know happy what? That leave. was down in the Palouse, right? Yeah. And yeah. again, that was that was a great ride. That was the most beautiful country we've ridden in, that as far a, as I'm concerned. It was an, a nice exterior, old, yeah, it's super got a little old, saloon yeah. look on the in the front. The, the uh, straddle up your horse. Yeah, I liked it. And uh, she did a photo with us, and they were very active on social media. So they shared some of our ride photos while we were down running through, and running, some, running amok. Had, <laughs> had some historic pictures. Yeah, it was very map. cool. Yeah, okay, here's another one that I like from one of our rides this summer that, that was unexpected the Merchant's Cafe in Pioneer Square in Seattle. Oh, Remember that yes. stop? Yep. So, Mer- minus the homeless wheelchair guy. That, well, they're all but, over. But, it, you know, the thing is, the Merchants has been there forever. I've been there many, many times. In fact, I used to own a bar down in Pioneer Square, and we'd go over there once in a while and have a drink. But I haven't been there in 25 years. And that was my first introduction to it, and I loved it. That was yeah. a great bar. It's got you, the downstairs. Yeah, with this crate. Yeah, the whole thing is so classic Seattle and classic pub and classic, you know, everything on every level. And on top of it, it's haunted. And on top of it, there, we had two bartenders working that both had experienced right. paranormal activity yeah. and shared it with us. And I just thought that was that was great. Right. So, yeah. you know, that that was I would agree. I, I would go back there in a heartbeat. Yeah, the merchant was good. And and so that was a trip in Seattle. But you guys talk about another one. Give me another one. You got. We're going to come up with like fourteen. L- of them Lizard, here. what do you got? Well, so what was the what was the name of the bar in, in Idaho where we met the girls from Montana? The two one nine lounge. Lugsies? No, the two one nine lounge. Yeah, the two nine. Two one nine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was yes. Yeah. That was fun. Was it, it wasn't a great bar, but it was a great experience. Yeah, it was <laughs> only because yeah we we it started. That's where we met Michael and the, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. They're yeah, all from Billings. They're yes. from Billings. Right. Yes. In fact, in fact, they're listeners. No oh, way. hi, girls. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, at least Michael is, and so and she follows. She follows our page. Hope and, you uh, love the tats. <laughs> So yeah, that was a fun afternoon at a fun bar. Uh, how about how about uh, let's give us one more? You know what? How about how about um, where we went? Was it the Spar Pole, Sprague Pole, in in uh, Montana? They had the museum. Yeah. yeah, that's the one with the museum. Sprague Pole. That Sprague. was on my list. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, yeah. So I didn't. I I liked it there, but here's a, here was the problem. You had a scooter I had a broken issue. scooter. Yeah, you were in a different world. And I just world. wasn't. I didn't. I didn't like settle into that. You didn't bar let go. Yeah. And we set, we ordered a drink, and all of a sudden we were forced to go into the museum instead of getting to know the bar a little bit and understanding what their, what no, their no, no. theme was. No, brand we weren't or, forced to go into the museum. You challenged the mother bartender, and you were going to teach her to become a new Catholic. No, 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 that, that was Pritchard. That was a Pritchard. The Sprague Pole was where they had the huge museum and all that sort of thing. The Pritchard was... Well, it was the mother and the daughter. The oh, okay, daughter, I like Pritchard's. Were, yeah, yeah, I Pritchard like Pritchard too. That's yeah. a town called Pritchard, and yeah. it's the Pritchard Tavern. And it's the only thing left because they had a huge fire. 
and that's the only building yeah, left, right. and that's got the campground. Remember the campground? That's right, the Sprague Pole, and we, we went past the other bar where the guy right. was mining underneath. Under his what, bed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, well, both, both are pretty cool towns. Yeah. Bars. Sorry, sorry you had to feel that way about the Sprague Pole. I, I, I just like the never, I would have stayed longer had I hadn't been jonesing about my scooter being yeah. broken. So, Believe but, me, I've been there. <laughs> flat tire, dude. Yeah. And, yeah, Lonnie. No, I was just going to say, you were, you were kind of a, I don't want to say whiny bitch, but you were a little bit uptight <laughs> because your scooter wasn't performing properly and we had to deal and, with it. And I'm okay with that because yeah. I didn't want to carry his ass home. <laughs> yeah. I just, Two up. He needed to worry about his shit. <laughs> I want to sit in front of you facing backwards. <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah. All right. Here, that here, again is another podcast. Here, on, here was another ride that really, really enjoyed it. But before we get there, why don't you guys give us one more of your favorite stops over the summer? Think about where we've been. We've been all the way out east. We went. Didn't we go south for a trip? We did. We did yeah. our, our usual. That's always a great time. Um, I like Kel. Kel's drew me to it. It was. It's been a long time since I've been to Kel's, and and she was a vested owner. Karen. Karen, who cared, had a great story. Took care of us. Went upstairs. Yeah. Um, I, would, I won't say what happened up there, but yeah, I would drink to that. You know that we've been to most of the local bars several times, but Kells was the first for me, and uh, and Karen and that whole experience was really cool. Yeah, and there she was multiple that, bars there. Yeah, with her with her Irish lilt and the yes. red hair, and I went back there on on, on Cooper's twenty one run, and they said uh, Karen's taken a leave of absence. He wasn't there. So, fighting the family. Ah, who knows? Fight yeah. the fight. Uh, we need to go back. Yeah, we do. But hi, Karen, if you still listen, uh, and thanks again for all the time you spent with us. Okay, I want to talk about the mule. Yep. Oh. The mule in Tacoma. Yep. Now, over the summer, I went there twice. Hmm. One time, uh, both times with you? I can't remember. No, I was I there. Was, Scott was I not. I was only there one it was oh, you no. I, we, I went to the Mule separately. You guys were on your own there. The first time we went there, it wasn't even supposed to be open, and it was, it was a bright, sunny day. Right. The door was open, pretty little bartender in there uh, saying, it was just such a nice day. I opened early. We sat down and started talking with her. I, I want to say her name was Molly, and I'm sorry if it really isn't that, but it was something close to that. And uh, uh, she w- was a great host and, and then told us one of the very best ghost stories that we collected this season. For sure. And I thought it might be kind of fun to, to close, this, close this thing out uh, with, with Molly's story of the typewriters in the middle of the night. Or Maggie or Michelle. Well, yeah. Millie. Was it? No. No, he, that was he, old Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it'll come up at, it, when we do the uh, story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load it in right now and, and uh, say very best of 2019 um, it was a good year. I, I it think, was a damn I think good it's year. probably going to top the uh, People magazine list of ghosts and scooters and bars. Well, everybody's the waiting to hear what we're going to pick. <laughs> that's for sure. It's local, historical, and riveting. So, uh, so here's the story from the Mule. The house that I live in has a big, like, kind of finished basement, but unfinished carpeted. It's got sort of like the Viz Queen covering the insulation. It's not very luxe, but it's a lot of room, so I rented it as a studio. And my first night staying there, I had there was like already a king bed kind of tucked into one far corner, um, just next to like where a storage area for underneath the staircase going down to it was, and then just a big expanse, the entire footprint of the house. Um, and when I was getting my walkthrough from my friend slash landlord, she was kind of apologizing for like the stuff that was left there, you know, saying like, you know, I just bought this house, you know, she's my age, she's in her mid thirties, just bought this house for my family, they've lived here for generations, this is the accumulation of generations of stuff, but don't worry, I'm taking it all to the dump tomorrow. I didn't care, and so I, you know, said this is great, and I go to sleep, and in the middle of the night, I was woken up to the sound of the loudest, like, typewriter noise, like old fashioned typewriter, yeah. you know, like um, definitely the metal, you know, metal through wow. the ribbon and everything. Very, very loudly, very clearly coming from under the stairs. So that's, you know, just right right next to where I was sleeping. And I, I got freaked out. I was thinking to myself, this is a dream. I looked around. I am a heavy sleeper, so I didn't necessarily think that it could be outside the realm of possibility that it was a dream, but I was like very clearly awake and very freaked out and it just it was slow and rhythmic and just 
a typewriter sound and that was all it was very very clearly coming from this area I kind of eventually calmed myself down and decided that I just needed to, to go to, to rest and it would be okay and I did and the next day I um, knew I had to tell my roommate about it like I got upstairs and I thought I might sound a little crazy we certainly don't like have you know metaphysical conversations all that often but it was weird it felt weird so I get up there and I tell her as nonchalantly as possible like hey so in the middle of the night I was woken up to this really loud typewriter sound and she goes white and she's not a white lady <laughs> and uh, she goes white and she I you know we both got chills and she said um that has to be ancestor spirit my grandfather did a lot of translation down there you know a couple generations ago on an old typewriter this feels weird I'm calling my parents because their parents are still very involved in the tribe they came down and uh, looked through those boxes that she was saying she was going to take to the dump. Everything under the stairs was irreplaceable translations of old Lushutsi stories oh that gosh. we would have just hauled to the dump with the rest of the, like, you know, garbage crap that was down there. So wow. yeah. somebody was letting you know. Yeah. And it was very, it was, unmis- I was unmistakably awake. It was very weird. Um, and the fact that we found those, those hand types. Did they find a typewriter? Um, they, she still has a typewriter. It's upstairs now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, Miley, so, that's a great story. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna have that. We're oh, gonna use it because we're at the Mule. Yeah, on South the, Tacoma <laughs> Way in yeah. Tacoma, Washington. Absolutely, right? that's where All we right. are. Thank oh, you for visiting so cool. us. Yeah. I appreciate that. Oh man, that's still a good one. Uh, it's top one or two since of we've all been the collecting. Sto- yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, and it's a local name. Yeah, it is. It's a Fife High School name, and the. Um, Native American twist to it. It's got it all. Yeah. Well, we all grew up in this area with and our friends and have hung out with with many of the people involved. But to hear about like, was it World War II translation to whatever it was, it was pretty cool. Well, didn't you listen to her story? <laughs> I did. <laughs> but I, you know, I will what? again though. <laughs> no, but yeah. the nostalgia, the fact they saved those stories. I mean, yeah, that could, yeah, that yeah, was going to be easy. thrown away, yeah. and for whatever reason that. A power brought well, into it. It just tells us there's a lot more to that what's going on than what we're looking at. God, I hope so what because what I'm at. doing, yeah, <laughs> it's brutal. Hey, I want you to notice that I never once, not even one time, brought up Janelle in the firehouse in Buckley. Didn't even bring it up. Didn't even go there last year. Do you know why? Because I'm over that shit. Oh, you know why? Because she's over you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she ever had any interest in me. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Lizard, next stop, the firehouse. <laughs> we're going to test okay, it. we're going to have to go up there. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, she was... Well, congratulations. You just never knew what you had. <laughs> hey, she, you know, it's time to roll on, and uh, we got <laughs> we got uh, more bars to get to and more stories to tell. And, and, and a whole and, other and season. And there's a lot, a lot of other Janelles we got on the horizon. That's right, and there's a big winter for us to get to <laughs> as well. I'm going to have to put on my uh, t- t- my uh, my blankie. my bl- my your little blankie, blankie. my you're, scooter you're, blanket. Your your riding Tuscano, your riding my blanket, your it is. Yeah. scooter skirt, my moto beacon. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, whatever. Uh, hey, to our listeners, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to this dribble and our musings of all things scooters, ghosts and bars and thanks to weeknights for the music and thanks to Scout, Lizard, Chong, Ike, Pen Domino, and the Grizzly Vet for keeping life interesting. And until then, be safe out there. Head on a swivel, keep the rubber side down, and ride. And remember, New Zealand, we're coming. We're coming, we're coming. your way. Yeah. Yeah. Ride, baby, ride. <laughs> hey, this is Copyright, Chasing Ghosts on Scooters in Bars 2019. <laughs>